Let's go to Der Meister Turnier in Barmen, Germany, Deutschland, August 16th, 1905, playing Kurt von Barderleben, another top player of the um, 19th century, was Kurt von Bardeleben. And he tries the French defense. Of course, you're familiar. Preparing to play d5 here um, is the French defense. And of course, um, <clears throat> that gives black a nice solid pawn chain. But um, it does block this bishop in for a long, long time. Chess and Onion says, Germany has more masters than any other country, but relatively few grandmasters. <clears throat> I haven't done any videos specifically on Bobby Fischer. I have fe featured Fischer on some videos. For example, my video on double attacks has a game between Bobby Fischer and Paul Cades. <clears throat> and of course, there are other game, Fischer games in several of my videos. You can find those at my YouTube channel. All right, anyway, this is a normal variation. <clears throat> classical variation here. And this is Richter's attack, named for Kurt Richter, same as in the Richter Rouser or the Richter Verisov. Crying Dove throwing some cheer bits into the channel. Thank you. Um, Bishop takes f6. Knight f3. Kingside castle, bishop d3. C5 and e5. Bishop e7 is the most common move here. Um, in the database, bishop e7 is played 31 times. This move is only played twice. And black won with it once and white won with it once. <clears throat> uh, some um, um, who is it chess and onion says kids like to play pawn to c4 and not just kids not just kids but uh, that kind of move is played frequently in this idea um which, you know, after you take the bishop and he takes your bishop, you're taking the pawn, threatening to promote. And so, therefore, you can't say, well, I'm going to take your pawn because if you take my rook, I'll take your queen. No, you won't because I'm going to take with check because I'm promoting to a queen. Crying Dove says Yasser Sirawan played C4 in a in a Karo Khan type of variation. Well, there are some positions where it's okay. A, a Darkestra says, "Are you a titled player, also known as Blake? Are you a titled player?" Yes, I am a I am a, a Grand Patser. I've been named a Grand Patser. And in order to become, it's not easy to become a Grand Patser because in order to become a Grand Patser, you need to get three Grand Patser norms. And the only way to get a Grand Patser norm, you have to play on, uh, you have to blunder on three different continents, playing against players from three different nations. Well, I've done it. I've actually blundered on four different continents. 
I've blundered here in North America. I've blundered in South America. I have blundered in Europe. And I've blundered in Africa. And I don't know what the islands count as because I've blundered on the island of Diego Garcia, which is in the middle of the Indian Ocean. And I have blundered in the French Polynesian Islands. I've blundered in Greece. I've blundered in Scotland. I've blundered in Spain. Uh, I've blundered in so many places. It's, it's, it's hard to believe I'm only a Grand Patser. <clears throat> All right. Back to this. <laughs> That's right. I was, I was stationed on the island of Diego Garcia for 13 months. That's a, a G, not a C. Um, Tunda, Mike, Tunda Mike had a little bit of a typo there. All right, so so C takes D4 here is what was actually played. That's right, middle of the Indian Ocean. It's not quite the end of the world, but you can see it from there. I've got Diego Garcia, little island blues. Diego Garcia, small island blues. Yeah. We used to have an SRT maintenance there for communications. Well, when I was there, we were installing a new transmitter site, 50 megawatts of transmitting power per um, transmitter. I was an HF communications technician. Okay, pawn takes bishop, pawn takes knight, pawn takes pawn, king takes pawn, and as you can see here, um, pawn takes pawn. And black still has all these pieces in bed and his king is exposed. Um, white has two pieces out of bed, but he's got some isolated pawns here, doubled pawns. Black has the better center. So toss a coin to, to decide who's better here, black or white. <clears throat> it's about equal. And black does immediately get a piece into the into the field of play. Knight to d4 tries to beg for a, an exchange in undoubling these pawns. That's not going to happen. Standard remote terminal is SRT. Uh, I was there. Uh, in uh, what year was I there? 80, 80, uh, was I there 85 to 86? I think I was there January 85 to February 86. Or, oh no. No, I was there because I was in uh, Groton, Connecticut in 85. Uh, anyway, it's either there 85 to 86 or 86 to 87. <laughs> yeah, um, was it run by the Air Force? If it was run by the Air Force, it was actually further down the island than even my, my uh, place was. The island um, looks like sort of a horseshoe, like a crooked horseshoe. And way up north is where the main part of the base is. There was a huge depot there for um, supply. There was an, a munitions depot there. There was a, an enormous airstrip there. Um, yeah, yeah, I was there during the Reagan years. Yeah, President Reagan was my commander in chief. Yeah, now Diego Garcia would be the worst place to be in case of a nuclear war because certainly that would be one of the first places to be blown to smithereens because um, of how much 
how much um, Diego, how important, how strategically important Diego Garcia is and logistically important. All right, back to this. I am really burning off the clock. E5, predicted by crying dove to prevent queen to g4 check, to put the knight in danger. Um, queen h5, I don't know that you need to play that move. Hello, Draxus 113. Okay, he's threatening this, but I think why not knight f5 check? Why not knight takes knight, for that matter, chess and onions? Um, knight f5 check, and the king just tucks away and he has some mobility. Knight takes knight. Pawn takes knight. And you're still equal. But queen h5... Saxus knight, and after queen takes and king to f6, king e7, black seems okay here, he castle. He wanted to create some safety here, a barrier. But you could do that later. So you can take this, and, and if you're worried about a check, let's say you're worried about, like, rook e1 check, then you play bishop e6. And you get an extra pawn out of the deal. Well, bishop e6, rook a b1. Oops, wrong button. You just play b6 here. He played rook b8. B6 seems to be fine as well, but perhaps you don't want to undefend this knight and create weaknesses here, so he played rook B8. C takes D4, rook H8 hits the queen. Queen E3 pins the bishop. He steps out of the pin. You could act, play an active move like threaten checkmate, and and um, that's going to force a weakness here. And then you get your king out of the way, and you're ready to maybe come in and try attacking in these weaknesses. So he missed that shot. That seems like a gimme because this is a textbook checkmate here with a queen on h2, supported by another piece. That's a textbook mate. But I, I think he's really kind of panicking in a way. Psychologically, he felt he, he's almost compelled. f4. Hmm. It's funny that he was in a hurry not to play an active move like queen d6 here. He was in a hurry to get his king to safety, but then he doesn't continue to get it out of the way. Instead, he plays f5. Rook fd1. Why is rook fd1? Uh, perhaps he's got some eyes of opening the D file and pushing the D pawn with the support of the rook. I mean, generally speaking, you'll see these masters frequently get their long range pieces in line with their opponent's targets. Queen H4 now is played here. It's no longer checkmate threat, but it is a, an attack. H3. Okay. Rook G8, Rook G3 seems good. 
How does black lose this game? Queen takes h3. Bishop f7. Somebody tell me how black loses this. King c7. Continue your attack. Continue your attack. Okay, king c7. C takes d5. Now rook bg8. Rook. That's interesting. Uh, that's how he loses this game. He went to the wrong. You don't want to stay in line with this bishop. That's how he loses. You've got to play your king over here. You've got to play king to c8 here. Why king to c8 and not king to c7? Because um, black can attack on the dark squares, but he cannot attack on the light squares here. So this is how he loses. This, this move is the losing move. Black is winning until he plays right here. That's just begging to be, you know. Well, I don't even need, I don't, come to think of it, I don't even need the rook. Because the pawn's going to stop. Okay, but wait, you can take here. You can take the checking piece. Let me think about this here. Well, but you can make a sacrifice. Yeah, yeah, this is a this is probably the only losing move, this king a8. Well, no, you could play king a6 and lose too. <laughs> but yeah, he has to play his king over here. If he play look, if he plays king to c8. If he plays king to c8, how does white continue with his attack on the king? And how does white stop black's attack? Because you see the threat here. You've got three attackers aiming at the magic square. And you only have two defenders, one of which is the king. So you can imagine check. And, of course, king f1 is answered by queen h1, check. And then the queen would have to block, and then queen takes g1 as mate. So, for example, any careless move, any careless move, and you've got this checkmate sequence here. Okay. So checkmate is being threatened by black. For that reason, you need to make a move that doesn't let white keep giving you check. Hello, Karpov's butler. You have to make a move that does not allow... You've got checkmate in three. It's forced. There's nothing that's going to stop him. Well, maybe he could play rook e2 to try to defend at another defender. But the point is you cannot give... You cannot allow... From this current position, if it's black to move and he's not in check, well, you don't want to move to a dark square because that's going to allow that. But So, king c8. I guess he could defend with rook e2. But the queen then is going to be undefended. After takes, 
if you take here with the bishop, then check and you lose the queen. And of course, if you take with the rook, then check and you lose the queen. So black's got an enormous attack here. Black has an, an enormous attack. So he needs to move somewhere where white cannot give him check. But he moved to a8. And so c7 is going to lead to a win. c7 check. Everybody's screaming at me that, but he can take the... He can take the, the bishop because this pawn is pinned. Okay, but after queen e8 check, if you take with the bishop, you're checkmated with the promotion. And if you take with the rook, you're still going to get checkmated with the promotion. By playing king to c8, that promotion's never going to happen. Never going to happen. So that's how I would play it. Excuse me, sorry about that. And that is how he played it. And that's exactly what he did. And that's how the game ended. That's exactly how the game ended. So, but if he plays queen, a king to c8, how does white continue here? Somebody says bishop c4. Uh, the bishop can't move to c4. Oh, this bishop, you want to move that to c4? Now, black's plan is very clear. He's going to sack his rook, and then he's going to get give... Um, He's going to sack his rook, replace it with the next rook, and then give checkmate. That's Black's plan. But he has to play somewhere where white cannot give him check. I don't see now how white can... Because this checkmate threat is unstoppable, you can no longer play this move... This queen sacrifice, it doesn't, it's no longer valid because there's no checkmate there. It's a world of difference between king on a8 and king on c8. You can no longer push this pawn because of this checkmate. It's forced. Forced checkmate. You cannot give check. There's no nowhere to give check. No access anywhere to give check, okay, except to sacrifice your queen. You cannot defend because of that other line I showed. You're losing your queen. No matter how you take this, you're losing your queen. There's nothing for white to do here. This this was the difference in the game. It's amazing. Black actually had this game in hand. So, interesting how here on move 29... And that's a principle also. Speaking of chess principles, you know, when you have an imminent checkmate, <clears throat> you're about to give checkmate, you want to make sure your king cannot be checked. Because the only resource that white has to stop the checkmate is giving you check. It's a defensive resource. It's a a resource that says, okay, yes, you can checkmate me in three moves, but you're never going to be able to deploy the the first move because you're you are in check. 
And so this was really a nice continuation for white and an unfortunate um, move for black. If he only comes here, I guess, I mean, it's it might seem natural to want to stay by a piece, but here you can't do it with this bishop staring your king in the face. I mean, even a master, especially a master of the caliber of von Baderleben, should have recognized that that pawn's moving. So, I mean, what did he fail to see? He must not have seen the sa the queen's sacrifice. That's what von ba Bartleben said. He said, "Go ahead and give me check. I'm gonna. You're gonna lose your bishop." That's he psychologically thought to himself, "There's nothing you have." Oh yes, I do. I have check, and you have to get out of check. You must get out of check. If you take with the bishop, you block your defender and I checkmate you. And if you take with the rook, I'm taking with my rook with a new check and then I'm checkmating you. So black basically his eyes got as big as saucers. He he said, "Oh, he uh, he said, "Oh, Mises thinks he's going to get an attack on my king." Ooh, wait till he sees this. And and uh, Mises played queen e8 check, and and uh, von Baderleben said, and his jaw hit the ground. So yeah, black should have won that. Pretty nice game. Yeah, black black wins with king c8. He loses with <laughs> he loses with pretty much any other move. 